enhancing items is a huge part of customizing your favorite items in Dragon's Dogma 2, but it's also a great way to keep your current gear viable for much longer. And there are four different places to enhance your gear with a fifth endgame one. Each one of those enhancement methods provides different bonuses geared towards different use cases. In this video today, we'll discuss each one of those enhancement methods and which vocations really benefit from each one. If this is your first time on my channel, the way I do things is by upfronting the knowledge of my videos so you can decide if it's the right one for you. So really this comes down to what vocation you want to play most or even further, you can just improve the items for the vocation you vocation you're temporarily playing. But we have four main methods, Vermundian, Elven, Dwarven, and Battalion. Vermundian is a well-rounded addition to most stats and a reduction in item weight. Elven adds to magic attack and magic defense primarily with minor additions to strength and defense and a reduction in item weight. Dwarven adds to the same all well-rounded bonuses that Vermundian adds, albeit slightly lower, with the added benefit of knockdown and knockdown resistance to the item, but also increases its weight. Lastly, Battalion increases the opposite of Elven, so heavy strength and defense bonus with a minor addition to magic attack and magic defense, while also adding to the item weight. Then all this can be improved to the fourth red slot using the Worm Fire Forging that is just a flat improvement to the item, and it halves the weight, which you need to have done the first three enhancements first. And lastly, of course, you can mix and match these as you see fit, but that's the entire gist of this video. So if that's all you wanted to know, please feel free to shut the video down before you head out though please don't forget to like comment or subscribe if this video helped you as that has a huge impact on my channel if you've not yet picked up dragon's dogma 2 for the pc you can use my link to my capcom affiliated nexus store in the comments below that gets me something like a 20 percent commission and you get the key directly from the developer which goes a long way towards supplying my mini aussie's vicious treat addiction you can also find my playlist and pawn code in the comment and description as well but let's get started here on the best way to enhance items in dragon's dogma 2 before we jump into the actual portion of the smithing, one thing to take a look at are what the smithing is going to actually, or enhancing is actually going to, well, enhance. And it's gonna come down to strength, magic, or magic, magic defense. Now, the other two things that are going to be improved are knockdown resistance, or in this case, knockdown power. And then, of course, the item weight is going to be affected in all of these. And this is gonna kind of break out how you're gonna go about enhancing your items you know if i take a look at say you know kraus time well this thing is going to do magic damage or magic uh, uh strength i want that to have as high as possible right because it's only going to be used by a sorcerer so putting into elven is probably going to be the most bang for the buck now the knockdown power i could scale up if i wanted to whatever the situation is same thing here with the gimbal here because this is a magic archer um capability now what you really need to think about too are the types of skills that you use. Let's switch over to my uh, pawn here. He is a warrior. Now this thing does strength, which is 524, but it has knockdown power of 456. And he's also a warrior. And I can kind of supplement knockdown power by jumping into the dwarven of uh, uh, fashion of smithing, which is probably even the best for warrior before you even get to that section. But um, by simply doing that, you know, hey, I'm increased my knockdown power. And now I can go over here and I can use rings that, hey, this is going to increase my stack, stagger and knockdown power. And because I'm a warrior, I have the uh, vocation ability here, the very bottom, uh, dominance, augment your knockdown power. So you can lean into some of the things that you're going to get from these enhancements, right? Maybe I, I lean into stuff from mage or where is mage? I have mage somewhere over here, here, this one is, is it, which is augmenting your magical defense. And that's what I mean is you don't need to kind of say, okay, well, Dwarven is the best smithing no matter what, just go ahead and use Dwarven. And it, for the most part, it's very good for melee weapons. I'm not gonna lie to you. But you can also use these things to kind of supplement the weaknesses in armor. So taking a look here at this plate armor, it's got 418 defense. That's really, really nice, but it has really low magic defense. So maybe I put one or two levels into Elven Smithing here, and then a couple levels into either Vermundian or um, Batali or Dwarven, whatever it is. So mix and match these things and kind of take a look at your defense and your magic defense, and your knockdown resistance, or your strength, your magic strength and your knockdown power to kind of help determine how you're going to approach these four smithing methods. And it's worth noting too, if you are playing fighter, um, augmenting this is also important because fighter uses their shield for a lot of different things, right? There are a lot of skills that will use this. And that kind of goes into the final portion of this, in this section is 
Keep in mind the strength and magic modification to any weapon will then cater into the type of damage that the skill does. Take for example, fighter will be using primarily strength based physical skills. Take for example, a archer uses primarily strength based physical skills. But let's look at a magic archer. That's all magic. Let's take a look at um, a thief. That's all strength. Or a sorcerer and mage. That's all magic. So you want to kind of lean into these into the direction that's also going to be augmenting their skills, not so much the outright uh, uh, capability of the weapon. And knockdown power is a skill that will modify or a stat on an item that will modify a skill that focuses on knocking things down. Shield bash, that shield charge, um, the, the warrior's capabilities to knock things down, all that stuff lends itself into knockdown power. And there's some things with archer that lends itself into knockdown power. Power. Knockdown power not modifies the thief's ability to grapple and pull things. So those things are all kind of part of the elements of enhancing your items and taking a look at your skills and taking a look at what you need to enhance to make it better. The first smithing we're going to start talking about is the Batali smithing. And this is the best smithing when it comes to greatly increasing your strength and defense, but has little effect on magic and magic uh, defense. This is the opposite of the elven smithing, which we'll talk about next. So if you want a raw increase to the strength capabilities of your strength focused items, this is if you're playing a fighter, a thief, an archer, a warrior, people that are strictly using strength to do their damage, this is going to be for you. Um, it does increase the item's weight though, so that is worth noting. And we're going to look at the black matter because it's about a like a upper to mid tier level of two-handed weapon that you find in the game and we're going to look at it as, as it compares to all of the other smithing methods and what gets improved and what gets you know not improved and looking at it here we can see that it's going to get a strength increase of 22 from 524 to 546 and what you should really do when you're taking a look at this is think about what kind of character you're playing are you playing a fighter character well yeah great this is going to be our warrior character this is really really good for playing that character to increase their physical attack and or defense, right? Because we can come down to indomitable armor and that's gonna increase the defense from 365 up to 377. And that of course is going to be another good example here of just a raw increase and a very, very slight increase of four to magic defense. You're never gonna see a huge substantial increase to magic defense. Defense itself always will be a higher stat. Even when we take a look at strictly like mage armor here, imminent coat, that's magic defense is 212 versus its defense at 373. So magic defense will always be a lower number by comparison, or at least it will never have really, really huge, massive gains. Um, but, when you're playing a character, do I always just take my fighters and bring them here and increase all their weapons? Technically, no. Um, I, I honestly would argue too that the Dwarven Smithing is probably the best when it comes to say, taking a look at uh, a warrior, for example, because this increases that knockdown power. And we talked about that before, right? How um, knockdown power is a, is a really awesome thing to improve. I can take my, my warrior himself Coming and I can improve his capabilities through his um through this augment here through rings through using that dwarven smithing to really kind of stack things up so i think that when it comes to batali smithing it's really good and because it's so easy to unlock you just simply need to get to batali to unlock it it's a good place to start when it comes to a lot of your physical characters but it also is really good if i'm playing a mage or a fighter and I want to just, I'm sorry, a mage or a sorcerer or any of my magic characters, and I want to just simply make their armor a little bit tankier, it's a great place to start. Um, because this is just going to increase that flat defense across the board, 373 up to 379. So we know we're getting a pretty good bang for the buck there when it comes to just increasing the overall defensibility of my squishier characters. But I think all, ultimately, if you're playing a physical character, you're going to want to go for Dwarven for that knockdown power increase. And the fact that it's a flat increase across the board rather than just a focused one. Those are some things to consider. Now, what's also interesting is taking a look at how smithing really works in this game. So take a look at Black Matter here. We're gonna get 22 points added to the strength of this two-handed weapon. Well, here's another two-handed weapon that is maybe a little bit lower in overall caliber. Um, and it goes from 369 to 383. 
which you'll notice is only a 14 point gain, not a 22. So there's no hard and fast rule, right? There's no like, hey, you're going to go to Batali, you're going to go to your weapon, you're going to put points into it, and it's going to get 22 more strength. Nope, it's going to depend upon, is it a one-handed, is it a two-handed, is it a range, is it daggers, and then what the relative quote-unquote like item level is. There, there seems to be kind of like a hidden item level score that all, all these things have, and that dictates ultimately the per, not even like a percentage gain. Because if I take a look up here, my Iron Sword, it goes from 298 with zero enhancements to three enhancements at 332. That is an 11% overall gain across all three enhancements. So there's no hard and fast rule for this. There's no like, oh, if you do this and do that, you're going to get this result. It's just pretty much kind of dealer's choice here. The point of this video is trying to educate you on which one's going to make the most sense to put points into for the vocation and the item types that you're using. So if you're playing a physical character and want to increase their physical damage, then this is a really good place to start. And if you're playing any kind of mage or magic oriented character and want to increase their defensive capabilities, this is also a good place to go. Now this could of course increase the inherent defense of your already defensive items, right? Like if I go over to my, my uh, armor, yeah, I can make this 418 up to 428, no big deal. But let's now talk about magic defense in the elven uh, crafting section because that might actually change your opinion of what uh, points you want to put into what when it comes to enhancing. Elven smithing is the opposite of Batali, right? Greatly increases magic and magic defense, but it has little effect on strength and defense. Now, if Batali, though, increased the weight of the item, Elven decreases the weight. There's the big difference there as well. So this is not going to be helpful for any kind of physical weapon you're using. Take a look at Black Matter here. It goes from 524 to 535. That is an 11 point increase. Uh, spoiler alert, Vermundian's going to increase it by 20. I'll just let you know that ahead of time. So Elven, it just does not make any sense when it comes to increasing the capabilities of your physical based characters. Again, that's thief, that's archer, that's warrior, that's fighter, the warfarer, depending on how you want to sprinkle that character around. Um, Mystic spear hand can benefit from both Elven and Batali. So I'm going to talk about that once we get into Vermundian and uh, the uh, uh, Dwarven. But you can see here that this isn't really overall going to help you a ton. And, I mean, yeah, it's going to reduce the weight, but that's not enough. I'd rather just use that final level into Worm Forge to just have the weight of the item, which we'll talk about when we get there. But what we're also going to look at, though, is our magic items. So if I'm playing, though, a magic archer, a mage, a uh, sorcerer, a trickster, anyone who uses magic attacks, it's a substantial increase here. So looking at the gimbal here, this is going to go from 323 to 343, a big 20 point jump, which is substantial, right? Too. And I've used this on my main magic archer weapon and it, it, it increased it by a total of 110 magic with all three points invested into it. But what I want you to take a look at though, is something like this, the exalted. So I can put a point here into Elvin and that's going to give me um, some magic damage. That's kind of cool. Isn't that going to be useful? It's not. So what you want to look at when it comes to an element, if it says plus 100%, it is converting 100% of the damage it's going to use. So for example, in this case, it's strength into that element. So this is radiant or, or luminous, whatever this game calls it. This is different than when you're playing like an Elden Ring or a Dark Souls, which if you have a normal weapon, it might say 50 physical damage, but another weapon might say 25 physical and 25 fire, or it might divide those numbers up differently. But there's also scaling that is attached to those numbers, right? Like the fire scales with your intelligence or your cunning or your piety, whatever it is. In this game, the, 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 the damage scaling is just linked to where it's taking its damage from so this is a strength based item so 100 percent is coming from that i have a magic archer bow that does 140 percent so it takes magic and does 100 percent of it and increases it by 40 percent so and I, and I think that's that's not a direct one to one i think that 40 percent is is like a skewed number i think it's like a two to one really like oh it's actually like a 20 percent increase um but it's very interesting how the how the element works, but increasing Elven's magic here does not increase the element damage. Only increasing the actual damage that that damage thing does is what's going to increase that damage, which is the most nonsensical statement. Basically, elements linked to strength. It stick with it. Whatever that item damage type is, that's what it's going to increase here. 
So you can see that Elven's going to be really good for those characters that do that type of damage. But this can also be good for your physical characters. Now, maybe not all the way, right? Like, take a look at this plate. This isn't going to increase my magic defense by four, which is overall not that substantial. But I could probably put two levels into here and then increase its physical defense with Batali, or maybe increase its knockdown resistance and its defense and magic defense even further with Dwarven. So when you take a look at Elven, it's the same thing that you're kind of looking opposite to Batali. Elven will make a lot of sense, obviously, for any magic damage character's weapon. But your physical damage characters will benefit from their armor increasing with the elven because it's now lighter and it increases the magic defense. So you can mix and match these things to kind of help improve the weaknesses that are inherent in your armor type. Again, for example, this is a physical fighter's armor or a warrior's armor, so it has very low magic defense. Look at this elven garb, though. It's a magic archer. It's probably one of the better magic archer uh, armor pieces. It has super high magic defense. I go ahead and look at where is this thing no this guy uh that's 210 magic defense so i can get six more points put into it and it drops its weight puts a little bit into defense though so it's like i think you can really take a look at these and piece them together which things have really low magic defense and i need that character to have good magic defense like for example maybe my fighter that guy who's up close and personal that's taking a lot of the hits i want him to have really good magic defense because he's taken a lot of hits from both uh, a dragon's claws and all of the spells dragons cast you do have to kind of think those things into your brain when it comes to the later portions of this game it's not just directly like oh i'm a fighter in the front i'm taking physical damage nope those beasts are now going to start casting spells against you even the griffin will eventually cast uh, lightning spells once you start to really deal with it or you deal with the chimera it does a little bit of action you've got the uh the golems what are they called like the elemental rock golems they do elemental damage too, so magic defense is something that you should not sleep on, and the best way to improve it is using Elven Smithing. Now we're into Vimundian. This is the very first one you're going to unlock, and I think for a lot of the game, it's actually, it's actually pretty good. I, I think you might be thinking to yourself, oh, I'm just going to be smacking all these points into it, and I don't think it's necessarily a wrong thing, which I think is also very good, that the game didn't give you a skewed... Um, enhancement method to start and go well great i just trashed that item because you can't remove any of these uh enhancements at least not initially and taking a look at this we can see that our strength for our black matter goes up to 544 now in batali that was 546 so it's a pretty cheap enhancement it's a pretty good one because it also reduces the weight but we don't get any improvement um to our uh, magic, to our defense, that just completely is outclassed by Batali. Now, what I mean by that is, this is going to give us 371 defense, but we also get 214 magic defense. So we got the same amount of magic defense we would have gotten had we put Elven points into this. It's now it now weighs less, but if I had done this in Batali, that mat that defense would be 377. So you can see how Batali can really directly help out any kind of physical item you're using. But it's nice that I'm now using a lower weight item with good magic defense. I, I personally think that if you are if you have not unlocked Dwarven Smithing, a combination of Vermundian and uh, Elven is the way to go for physical characters. It increases that magic defense and it increases their defense defense. Um, even I would argue after you unlock Dwarven, it's not worth it because Dwarven increases knockdown resistance on armor. Your knockdown resistance on a lot of your physical character armor is already pretty high. Um, it can be better on an archer or on a thief for sure. But I think Dwarven armor enhancements are better for uh, mages. Again, we'll get there when we get there. But I think Vermundian is really one of the kings of enhancing your armor. I think it's, again, really, really great way to do this, especially if you have a physical character. Now, when it comes to your weapon, again, I would probably choose a combination of Vermundian and um, Batali over just strictly Batali because Batali is going to increase the weight on this thing as well. So I'd rather increase this for, by, by Batali by maybe one point and then put the rest into Vermundian to decrease the weight and still get a pretty sizable strength increase. Remember, the, the difference here in strength is not that huge when it comes to the black matter. If we take a look over at uh, the Warblade, uh, we're looking at 382, 
where when we were in Batali, that number was 383. So it's a 13 point increase versus the 14 that we had in Batali. Now let's take a look at our iron swords, which have been our pretty much our good examples here. I didn't look at the iron sword in the elven area because it wasn't too much of a focus for me. But let's look at the iron sword. Base is 298, right? With a Vermundian full increase, it's 325 at a 1.6 weight carried. Uh, versus the Batali is 332 at a 1.8 carry. So this scaling does seem to be dependent to a lot, of course, on the, the weapon type, one-handed, two-handed, bow, uh, daggers, what have you. But just kind of looking at this comparison with three full points, we're at 332, we're at 325, so it's a seven-point difference. And the weight is, you know, 0.2 lower. So you can kind of weigh those things for yourself when it comes to the, the actual weapons themselves. And you can see this is an overall increase over from 298, 298 to 325 or 298 to 332. And just to throw one last comparison into the mix, we have the 318 of just your standard Elvin, just to give you that kind of comparison here. The weight carried is the same, right? But the substantial difference in strength is, is, is huge, right? For Mundian, is definitely going to be better than Elvin when it comes to your uh, physical weapons. But this again stands to reason that when you are using any kind of physical character, we are also going to deal with different kinds of ways of looking at their armor. So this is 371, the defense here. Uh, it was 370 in the elves and 377 with uh, Batali. So you do have those pretty stark trade-offs. And that's why I think that if you're playing a physical character, uh, fighter, warrior, thief, archer, all that action, a mix of Vermundian and Batali's way to go. But if you're playing a caster character, I think again, a mix of, um, I'm sorry, Vermundian and Elven for uh, your physical characters. And I think if you're playing a caster, it's a mix of Vermundian and Batali to get the reduction in arm uh, and weight carried, to get an increase to your defense here, but also get an in increase to your magic defense as well which is, is, is nice depending on what you're doing. If I was making a uh, caster character, I'd probably put one point into this, then two into Batali. Because that magic defense went to the same magic defense that we had on the Elven from 212 to 216. So I, I think you get a lot of benefit from jumping into mixing when it comes to armor between Vermundian and Batali or Elven, depending on the character's type. Let's now jump over to Dwarven to get that final kind of bit of equation and then kind of summarize everything into what makes the most sense, where and how. All right, we're on to our last one with Dwarven, which shares similarities with Vermundian because this is going to increase things across the board, but it will increase the weight like Batali. And the big thing, though, that this does is increase both knockdown power and knockdown resistance. So if you are playing with a warrior, it, it makes your warrior just disgusting. It can be pretty good on bows, too. So don't think that, oh, well, I'm playing an archer. I'm just going to go with Batali and, and Vermundian and walk away. No, Dwarven is very good on bows, too. So just kind of think about those things. It's more that the bow has really fun impact with stuff like Deathly Arrow um, that allows things you to really just knock things over. But I'd still probably stick to this with more either a mace on a fighter or something with already high innate knockdown power to have it have even more. Look at just one level of knockdown power on Black Matter, right? We're going to from 456 to 534. That's a 78 increase to knockdown power. It is substantial. And the strength increase is the same thing as Vermundian. It's just 20 increase to the strength. That's still a really good improvement overall. It does go up 0.32, which is the same thing as it went with Batali. But you can see that that's quite a, quite a bit of difference. Now we take a look at the Indomitable Armor, and we see stats again very similar to Batali. It's going to go up to, um, I'm sorry, uh, uh, that's very similar to um, Elven, actually. Its defense goes up five, and its magic defense goes up four. Not as huge of an increase like you get with, with uh, Vermundian. Remember, Vermundian went up to 371 uh, versus the 370 here that we get of uh, Dwarven, but the magic defense is the same. Now, the knockdown resistance, though, is substantial, right? We're going here from 448 to 486, which is a 38-point knockdown resistance. 
not as huge on physical armor because physical armor already has a massive knockdown resistance, but you're still going to get knocked down in physical. You're up close and personal. It's going to happen. But when this really kind of comes to the fore is when we take a look at something like this, just your simple eminent cloak coat. And this is a kind of a, a, a lower tier item anyway. It goes up for defense, which isn't huge, but having that knockdown resistance on these lower defense items is huge, man. It is so huge. So even to take a look at this Elven garb, we go from 138 to 168, and this is a, a more of a top tier item, right? It's it's a it's a more expensive item. You get this kind of the later mid game, and this thing goes up to 433 defense and 468 knockdown resistance. That's that's pretty great overall for your magic archer who when i first started magic archer i was getting knocked down all the damn time because of their armor allotments aren't always amazing this is going to be pretty good too here with uh, archer as well who also struggles with the same exact issue so if you're playing not necessarily a very stalwart character like a fighter or a warrior thief has a lot more abilities to dodge out of the way so maybe they're not overtly uh, strong, but they are more passive when it comes to, or more active when it comes to their defense capabilities, I would really invest in Dwarven. It does increase the weight, which is, is what it is, but being able to increase my defense and magic defense almost to the same level of what I had on Vermundian, but then also get a massive increase to my knockdown resistance is just something you just can't overlook. Dwarven, I think once you unlock it, will take the place of where you would put Vermundian into your armor, in my personal opinion. Um, I think if I'm playing a physical character, I want one or two ranks of Dwarven and then my ranks of Elvish to increase my magic defense for my physical characters. Or maybe I'm playing a uh, spellcasting character. I want those points in Dwarven and then my points here over into Batali if I want to go down that route. In fact, even if I'm playing a, a, a magic character, I would might completely remove Batali and just put points into Dwarven for the defensive portion of things because that knockdown resistance is just so massive and it stacks up so well too. I really, really like that. Let's take a look though at our, our lovely iron swords. So our iron sword here, its strength is going to match right up with Vermundia. Vermundia? Vermundian. <laughs> I know it's for all enhanced. I know what I've done. But you can see that knockdown power goes from 171 with Vermundian up to 255 which is over its, its base item is 171. So Vermundian doesn't increase it at all, zero points, versus putting Dwarven into it increases all the way to 255. The other ones don't increase the knockdown power at all. And you can see just, just starting at the top here, we'll go um, Batali's at 332, 318 with our elves, then both Dwarven and Vermundian have 325, but then our Dwarven has 255 knockdown power. All that over our 298 base strength and 171 base knockdown power. So you can see that Dwarven is really the way to go with almost all of your physical characters. Now, I don't think it's worth it really though with a casting character. So if you have any kind of mage or fighter, I don't think it makes a lot of sense. With that being said though, I think it makes a ton of sense with a mystic spear hand and i haven't talked about mystic spear hand almost this entire video because i think the way that you're going to spec the weapon is going to depend upon um i'm sorry your, your armor is going to just depend upon the mystic spear hand like oh okay i'm mystic spear hand i'm going to follow the rules that i'm going to follow for whatever type of magic defense or defense i want to shore up on the armor whatever it is but i think dwarven is super important for mystic spear hand because it does increase the strength it increases the magic, right? We know that that's going to happen. So let's go over to um, this. Here we go. Exalted, it increases the magic of this item and it increases its knockdown power. Those are all three things you're going to use as a mystic spear hand where no one else is going to give you that. They're going to give you strength or magic. Having the knockdown power is going to improve any capabilities that you would use that would do knockdown capabilities or at least just kind of moving around. You're throwing things left and right as a mystic spear hand, so you might as well lean into that direction. And I think that the Dwarven is like, oh, I'm just going to put almost all three points into it. Maybe two points into Dwarven and one point into... Um, elves to ramp up that magic damage it really kind of is up to you but i think that dwarven is one of those ones that stands out that even if i'm playing a, like a warrior too i'm going to put all three levels into knockdown power for my warrior because then i'm just going to be like hitting like a mac truck with this thing because i'm going to knock things over so much easier across all of the items i can use and all the core 
not core skills, all the augments I can use on Warrior to just make their knockdown power absurd. I think that once you really put the Dwarven points into an item like this, you're going to see how disgusting knockdown power can be in this game. It's, it's such a strong capability. This is gated by the, the fact, though, the only way to unlock this is by doing the quest to unlock the Magic Archer. Look at this guy. Look how, look how cute he looks. Which is all the way over here. Which is just south of the main city. Or you go into the main city, you go to Vernworth Castle, and almost like right where my cursor is, right here, there's a guy named Roman, who's ironically named after my dog. Um, it's not really. But he has a quest to send you into Batal to talk to a dwarf that unlocks Dwarven Smithing in Batal. So you can't just simply... Dwarven Smith is right here. Uh, you can't just simply go and tap into Dwarven Smithing like you can all the other crafters in this game. You have to unlock it. So that's why it's kind of a little bit of a gated system. And it is very strong in what it does. You just kind of have to know what it applies to what. And one last thing about Dwarven Smithing. If you are a fighter using a shield, put Dwarven Smithing into it. Because now your shield's going to knock down better. That is a huge advantage. You could completely skip the knockdown capabilities on your, your one-handed weapon. Just put Batali or uh, Vermundian onto this and kind of walk away. But Dwarven Smithing on your shield as a fighter is really huge since there are so many skills that lean into knocking things over, right? You've got your shield bash. You've got your ability to like whirl around with your shield. Um, that gouging, not gouging strike, the one where you charge forward with your shield. All those things, they use that knockdown power to be amplified, to be even better. And it also scales the strength because those abilities also do damage and it scales off of the strength of your actual um, item, in this case, a shield. So Dwarven is 100% the way to go for your shield on a fighter. And just to kind of keep this relatively spoiler free, if you go to this location on the map where there is a one, you progress through this, um, I guess if you go right here, right there. Um, underneath this is a merchant that will let you do worm forging. This is your last um, spot on any of your items. And it is a flat increase to the item stat across the board. And you need to do all three enhancements before you can do this. And then it halves the weight of the item. We don't necessarily know how that works. We don't know if it's a percentage increase. We don't know if it's worth it to do like, hey, yeah, you're going to do that plus three. But it makes sense to mix and match your enhancements of doing it this way or that way. We don't necessarily know how that works. We haven't really cracked it open because, like I said, all of the enhancing capabilities of items seems to scale off of some sort of hidden item level. Like an eye level, like, oh, this is an eye level 10 item. And this is what an, a level 10 character would use. So there's no real telling how that works. It's just going to be a flat improvement you're going to do to any and all weapons and armor. So there's no real way, there's no real sense in kind of talking about it and saying like, hey, this is, it's only worth it if you do. It's always going to be worth it because it's always an improvement. It's an improvement on the best form of that item. It just uses the end game currency to do so. So that's my note on Worm Forge. It's just, it's a non-factor because it's just going to be something you're always going to want to take if you can take it um on that item which you can on all items but you're not going to want to take it on like a level two item right you're going to want to take it on an end game item so all of this culminates into which is the best way to enhance your character and i think it breaks down to two categories you're either a caster or you're a physical character if you're a physical character i think your armor you're going to want to put two points two enhancement slots into whichever versatile you have unlocked either vermundian or Dwarven. If you have Dwarven unlocked, that's probably how you're going to you're going to favor Dwarven and then one point into Elf. This gives you a pretty good bonus to your magic defense. It, it's going to lower the weight after you've improved it. You've increased the weight with Dwarven and I think overall you're going to get a pretty good amount of defense increase and a good amount of magic defense increase. Um and that's just for your armor. Now for your weapon though, I think it's going to depend upon what you're playing. If you're playing a fighter Put all of your enhancement slots into Dwarven because it increases the knockdown power. Um, if you do not have that unlocked, I would probably actually just go Vermundian um, or Batal. Really. I guess you know that doesn't matter too much because it's not as crucial. I think the knockdown power is the biggest driving point. So in such a negligible amount that you're probably going to be fine either way. And I think if you are playing a fighter, you go either three points into... Um, Batali, if you have just Batali unlocked, or three points into Dwarven as soon as you unlock Dwarven to increase that knockdown power. That makes the most sense for Warrior. 
but I think everyone else outside of that fighter, thief, archer, um, even mystic spear hand too, depending on what, what, where you are at in the game. Um, anyone who uses strength as their primary da damage characteristic, I think you take a look at that and you put two points of, of versatile. So something like Vermundian, um, or Dwarven, and then you put one point um into batal because batal is a straight strength increase right i think doing that kind of way gives you some knockdown power if you've got dwarven but it also if you're doing vermundia it increases your strength it increases your it decreases the cost or the the, the weight of the item and then when you put batali it increases the overall strength now if i was doing a casting character here um i would instead do two versatile points for the armor and versatile being either Two points in Vermundi or two points into Dwarven. We're favoring Dwarven if we have it unlocked. And one point into Batali. That way it's going to outright increase my defense and it's going to increase my um, uh, knockdown resistance substantially. You can see here the Magician's Coat. This thing's got 220 defense, 475 magic defense. Um, I think this is like the end. Something like that. Um, but it's 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 pretty jet low on defense, right? And really low on knockdown resistance. So we want to buff that up. And I think real simply for casters, you're just going to put all three points into elf. You want to increase that magic damage. This is count. This is going to count if you're playing a sorcerer, a mage, a magic archer, um, a trickster. Even I think some instances of mystic spear hand can get away with using some elf points into them. And I think of all the classes, the mystic spear hand is going to be the interesting one and in how you're going to distinguish between dwarven and elf uh, points because you want to kind of determine how that strength and magic is coming out, which skills you're using and what have you. But hopefully this gives you a better idea of how to approach enhancing this game. And I think it's very granular. I, I think this video is very gray. It's not very uh, stark. Hey, do this and do nothing but this. This is the only way to do it. And I've looked at a lot of things online. A lot of people say, if you're doing Dwarven, if you're not doing Dwarven, you're wrong. And I've seen a lot of people say, if you're not doing Vermundi and you're wrong, play the game however the fuck you want. Who cares? It's a single player game. But this should help kind of crack the code of how you want to enhance things. And then once you're done enhancing those three slots, you put the worm forge onto it. It gets a flat increase to all of its stats and it gets halved on its weight, which I think this is what that is. Um, I can't remember that down. Always. Um, but either way here, if you have any tips on how to enhance your gear that you've done say, Hey, you know what? After through a lot of testing, I've tried this and that, and this is what I, what I went with. And this is why. Definitely let it be known in the comment section below. Um, if you want to test these things and you want to say, hey, you know what? I want to do all this myself. I want to see what really works. My recommendation to you is to go to an inn or to your house and rest and then do whatever you want. And then go back to the title screen and load from the inn because that way you can test everything. You can go and do some damage numbers. You can see how these things feel and then just load back to the inn and make the decision for what you want to do. Maybe you buy two copies of the same item and you enhance them differently and then you test those things out and then you load back to the end and you can then just make the decision for the one item and the one enhancements you want to go with. That's probably the biggest takeaway of this entire video is if you want to test it, use that load to load from your last in as a, a kind of like a surefire way to have a, a guaranteed save to get back to as you kind of fuck around and buy a bunch of stuff. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.